हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर लेटेस्ट प्रेजेंटेशन दिस इज अ जर्नल पब्लिश रिसेंटली टॉपिक इज स्पॉन्टेनियस ब्रीथिंग ट्रायल विद प्रेशर सपोर्ट वेंटिलेशन और ईपीस ईपेक्स ट्रायल इट वाज पब्लिश्ड बाय थाइले एट ऑल इन सीसीएम द डिसीजन ऑफ एक्सटूबेशन इज अ क्रिटिकल टाइम बिकॉज़ मोर्टेलिटी इज वेरी हाई इन केस ऑफ रीइंटूबेशन to reduce that risk guidelines recommend to systematically perform a spontaneous breathing trial before extubation in order to mimic the post extubation physiological conditions patient's effort is markedly lower during pressure support trial than during tp trial consequently pressure support trial may potentially hasten extubation but there is also a risk of reintubation in pressure support trial so what is the objective of this study it is a मल्टी सेंटर रैंडमाइज ट्रायल इट वॉज कंडक्टेड टू डिटरमाइन वेदर प्रेसर सपोर्ट वेंटिलेशन ट्रायल मे रिजल्ट इन ए शॉर्टर टाइम टू एक्सटूबेशन देन टी पीस विदाउट रिजल्टिंग इन ए हाई रिस्क ऑफ रीइंटूबेशन एमंग पेशेंट्स हू हैव ए हाई रिस्क ऑफ एक्सटूबेशन फेलियर प्रीवियसली लॉट ऑफ स्टडीज हैव बीन डन टू कंपेयर दिस टू मोडेलिटीज ऑफ एक्सटूबेशन ट्रायल बट पेशेंट सबसेट वॉज स्लाइटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दिस स्टडी दोज पेशेंट्स दे डिड नॉट हैव any extra risk of extubation failure but in this study they have taken specifically cardiac and uh, uh, respiratory failure patients those who have increased chances of extubation failure it was a multi center open label rct it was conducted in 31 icus in france from january 2020 to june 2021 randomization was performed with the use of central web based management system patient were enrolled before the initial sbt and were randomly assigned in a 1 is to 1 ratio patients who had a mechanical ventilation period of more than 24 hours were included and also those patients who were having high risk of reintubation that is patient older than 65 years and those patient having underlying chronic cardiac and lung diseases what are the exclusion criteria those patient who have low risk of extubation failure patients admitted for traumatic brain injury as these patient had baseline low gcs pre existing peri- peripheral muscle neuromuscular disease underlying myopathy or myasthenia gravis because these patients are high risk for uh, extubation failure do not reintubate order at the time of first spontaneous breathing trial what is the primary outcome they wanted to assess it is the number of ventilator free days at day 28 defined as the number of days alive and without invasive mechanical ventilation that is intubation or even on tracheostomy between the first spontaneous breathing trial that is day 1 and up to day 28 few secondary outcomes also they have observed that is the total time alive and without exposure to invasive or non invasive mechanical ventilation at day 28 it is different from the primary outcome which assess the only invasive mechanical ventilation successful initial spontaneous breathing trial in how many patients that is also a secondary outcome measure and the level of winning difficulty defined as a simple winning extubation less than 24 hours or difficult winning that is extubation in 7 days after the initial sbt or prolonged winning winning that is extubation more than 7 days after the first spontaneous breathing trial the time to extubation after the initial sbt also they have assessed and extubation within 7 days after the initial sbt so intervention what they have done all the spontaneous breathing trials were to be performed with the use of pressure support ventilation with a pressure support level of 8 cm of water with a fio2 of 40% or lower and they did not use any peep in tp group patients oxygen was provided through the tps at a flow rate of up to 6 liters per minute in both the groups spontaneous breathing trial was performed for approximately 1 hour and if they were uh, stable in that period and it was successful then they, were, they these patients were again kept in the control mode of ventilation for 2 hours to give rest and then they got extubated all the patients were followed until the day 28 after the initial spontaneous breathing trial and after extubation the prophylactic use of non invasive uh, ventilation that is oxygen administered through a face mask for at least 48 hours as well as oxygen administered through a high flow nasal cannula between sessions of non invasive ventilation was strongly encouraged in all patients 
So coming to the statistical analysis, sample size of 900 patients they have taken because they thought it would provide the trial with a 80% power to show an absolute difference between pressure support ventilation group and the TPS group in the duration of mechanical ventilation of two days. That is, in they thought that in pressure support ventilation group there will be two days less requirement of ventilator than TPS group. The analysis were performed on an intention to treat basis. Primary outcome was compared using Man Whitney U test. Secondary outcomes were also compared using chi square and Man Whitney U test. Kaplan Mayer curve were plotted to assess the probability of extubation during the seven days after initial SBT. And the probability of reintubation also were assessed by Kaplan Mayer curves du during the seven days after extubation. It is the flow, flow diagram showing the patient recruitment and progress. Total 3,975 patients in 31 ICU are considered to be ready to undergo initial spontaneous breathing trial. Out of them, 2018 patients were excluded mainly due to they had a low risk of extubation failure and had under, undergone reintubation, undergone intubation less than 24 hours earlier. And uh, finally, 1,957 patients had undergone intubation more than 24 hours earlier and had a high risk of extubation failure. Again, out of them, 481 patients were excluded. This time, 280 patients had a do not intubate order. 99 patients had already undergone initial SBT since intubation. So, 1,476 patients were eligible for inclusion in the trial. Out of them, again, 9, 493 patients were excluded. 381 patients out of them were eligible but did not undergo randomization owing to staff unavailability. In the final analysis, 983 patients underwent randomization, 493 in the TPS group, 490 in the pressure support ventilation group. And they are included in the intention to treat analysis in both the arms and 90 day follow up was done in both the groups. This is a table showing the demographic profile during. Uh, admission that is baseline so age is around 69 years mean Mo uh, male sex was predominant that is around 70 percent sap score uh, at the admission was around 53 in both the groups patients having chronic cardiac disease were around 46 percent in the pressure support ventilation group and 48 percent in the tps group uh, major cardiac disease were being ischemic heart disease or left ventricle dysfunction or fibrillation and uh, around 25 to 27 percent patient had chronic respiratory disease, mostly COPD, OHS, and other uh, restrictive pulmonary diseases. The main reason for intubation were acute respiratory failure, followed by coma, shock patients, and post cardiac arrest patients. And at the time of initial SBT, median duration of mechanical ventilation was around six days in both the groups. SOPA score was low at four in both the groups. Median RAS score was 0 and ventilator setting before the initial SBT, both the groups they were using pressure support ventilation in around 81% of patients and uh, PEEP was, PEEP level was around 9 in both the groups, sorry 6 in both the groups and pressure support level was 9. Coming to the outcomes, the primary outcome uh, that is median total time alive and without exposure to invasive mechanical ventilation at the day 28 is around 27 days in pressure support ventilation group and in TPS group also it is 27 days. So absolute difference with the 95 confidence interval that comes to 0 and the p-value is non-significant at 0.31. And the secondary outcomes, the first secondary outcome that is median time alive and without exposure to invasive or non-invasive mechanical ventilation at day 28. That comes to 25 days in pressure support ventilation and 25 days in TPS group also. Here also the absolute difference is 0 days and the p-value cannot be obtained. Successful initial spontaneous breathing trial was around 80% in pressure support ventilation group and bit less that is 71% in TPS group. It shows that uh, initial uh, SBT was successful more in pressure support ventilation group. And level of winning difficulty, most of the, of the patients had a simple winning that is around 77% in the pressure support ventilation group and 72% in the TPS group. Extubation less than 7 days after the initial SBT in 97% in the pressure support ventilation group and 94% in the TPS group. 
रेस्पिरेटरी फेलियर लेस देन सेवन डेज आफ्टर एक्सटूबेशन इन नाइनटीन परसेंट ऑफ पेशेंट इन प्रेसर सपोर्ट वेंटिलेशन ग्रुप एंड फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ पेशेंट इन टीपीज ग्रुप दिस रिजल्ट इज मे बी ड्यू टू इन प्रेसर सपोर्ट वेंटिलेशन ट्रायल सम ऑफ द फिजियोलॉजिकल पैरामीटर्स दे आर ऑब्सक्योर्ड एंड वंस पेशेंट गॉट गेट एक्सटूबेटेड दिस थिंग्स एगेन कम आउट सो दैट री इंटूबेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज वी आर गिविंग पीप एंड in tp trial that that thing that's why we may get delay in tp group but extubation failure is less in tp group so it is showing that the reintubation is higher in pressor support ventilation group that is around 72 reintubations that is 14.9% in pressor support ventilation group but 65 that is around 13.6% in tp group so reintubation is less in tp group and median length of icu stay is same around 11 to 12 days in both the groups and death is also same around 7% in both the groups and this is the diagram showing kaplan meier curve one is for uh, patient who did not uh, undergo extubation and uh, one is patient who had undergone reintubation we can see in extubation uh, delay is there in tp group around 27 patients could not get extubated at 7 days also and in pressure support ventilation only 11 patient could not get extubated at 7 days and uh, patient who had undergone reintubation definitely in pressure support ventilation it, the uh, amount is bit high than tp group coming to the discussion in this multi center randomized control trial involving 969 patients who had a high risk of extubation failure the number of ventilator free days at day 28 after the initial sbt did not differ significantly according to the spontaneous breathing trial that is either by pressure support ventilation or tps and extubation at 24 hours and 7 days were higher in pressure support ventilation group than in tps group but the percentage of patient who underwent reintubation within 7 days after extubation was similar or slightly high in uh, pressure support ventilation group so what are the limitations it was a double blind uh, trial the, sorry uh, the double blinding was uh, could not be done done because of the trial design and uh, it did not increase the total time without exposure to invasive mechanical ventilation so other uh, outcome measures can be used like uh, 28 day mortality or uh, uh, 90 day mortality so that there may be some significant result if we see these uh, other outcome measures and most patients receive prophylactic non invasive mechanical ventilation after extubation so that the chances of failure of extubation are low in previous trials they did not give any prophylactic uh, non invasive non invasive ventilation or hfnc after extubating the patient but in this uh, study they used that might obscure some uh, some results and uh, the chances of reintubation might get delayed and specific information regarding the sedation use was not collected they told that all the sedation levels were comparable but uh, actually uh, they did not get the proper sedation score and it was not mentioned in the study so there might be chances of failure of extubation due to level of sedation thank you